Hello everybody, it's Mrs. Ware at Stream English here and today I'm going to be answering the all-important question, what is analysis? You've probably heard that word used all the time by your English teachers and by me and it's seen as pretty much the most important skill in English. And so if you've ever felt like you don't really understand what teachers mean when they say that, hopefully this video will help you with figuring it out. One key thing to note is that I'm going to be looking at what analysis means in a very kind of general overall way. The exact way that you analyse different techniques can vary from technique to technique. So for that, I recommend having a look at my how to analyse various techniques videos um, because there you'll be able to get the specific help with maybe like metaphors or word choice or symbolism or whatever technique it is that you find difficult to analyse. And if you feel like the videos aren't uh, deep enough and you need a little bit more intensive help then just head over to streamenglish.co.uk where you can have a look at my courses or have a look at getting some tutoring. Let's do this! The first thing we want to do is just have a look at the outright definition of the word analysis. So we've got here a, a definition from the Cambridge Dictionary and we're going to forgive them for their use of Z instead of S uh, in organised because otherwise it's a good definition. They say that analysis is the process of studying or examining something in an organised way to learn more about it and that is definitely true for English. You're studying or examining some kind of text in order to learn more about it, to better understand the idea in it, um, the meaning in it, how it creates that meaning. I'm not sure about it being an organised way, there's no uh, formula or pattern that you follow necessarily with analysis, it's much more just about thinking and exploring, um, but most definitely it's about studying something in order to learn more about it. And then we also have a definition from BBC Bite Size. Now their definition is much more specific to analysing in English. And they say that analysis means breaking something down, so the it in that uh, definition there, they're going to be referring to a text, into its parts to uncover which are the most important in contributing to its overall meaning or effect. Now breaking it down into its parts, they're using kind of an analogy there. What they're basically saying is that you're breaking down a text by the different techniques being used by the writer, the crafting being used by the writer. And they're saying that you do that in order to figure out the overall meaning. And that's definitely true. You're breaking down the techniques used by the writer to look at the overall meaning or effect in the text. They also say it's about looking at the most important. Now, I would say judging the most important is more the skill of evaluation than analysis, but I can see where they're coming from in the sense that when you're writing an essay or something, you don't have time to cover absolutely everything that could be talked about in a text. And so you do prioritise the most significant and important techniques to creating the overall meaning. I think it's also worth here noting on what we mean by effect. Effect is basically what it makes the reader think or feel. Nice and simple there. Considering those definitions of analysis, we can see that analysis is part of the journey in understanding a text. And I break that journey down into three key questions. What, how and why. The what is what meaning is created in a text. Now this isn't actually the skill of analysis, this is the skill of inference and I've got another video on what inference is if you want to have a look at that. Analysis starts to come in once we know what the meaning in a text is and we want to examine how that meaning is created. To examine how the meaning is created, we could do language analysis, which involves breaking down the language used in a text, looking at the words and phrases being used. And we can also do structural analysis, which involves us breaking down how the text has been ordered and how that has been ordered for an effect. Language and structural analysis are very different skills and structural analysis is one that students often find quite challenging. So I've made a whole separate video on structural analysis so you can go and have a look for more assistance there. In this video I'll show you a bit more about how you do language analysis. You also then have the why. Now this is a question you don't tend to answer in language exams. In the GCSE English language exams you tend to just deal with the what and the how. The why tends to come in English literature because that is where you're doing thematic analysis and contextual analysis. Thematic analysis involves you looking for patterns across a text as a whole in order to identify what the key themes of the text are and what the writer is trying to say on those themes. 
You can't do that in the English language exam because you don't have the whole text. You've only got a small extract from it. Contextual analysis is where you're analysing how the context of production and reception have influenced the way the text has been written. And again, the reason you can do that with literature, but you can't with language, is because with English language, you've never seen that text before, so you don't know its context. Again, I have separate videos on both thematic analysis and contextual analysis, if you feel like you want a better insight into what those are. But overall, across all four of these different kinds of analysis, the basic idea is that you're trying to examine the text from a different angle, language angle, structure angle, theme angle, context angle, in order to constantly deepen your understanding of the text. To explore how analysis works in practice, we've got here a lyric from Cardi B's song, Bodak Yellow. And I'm gonna show you how analysis works with the language analysis part, because that is by far the most common type of analysis that you will do in your English lessons. So remember, the definition of analysis is that we are breaking a text down, breaking a quote down into the different techniques being used by the writer in order to explore how the writer is creating meaning. So let's have a look at how that works with Cardi B's Bodak Yellow. We have this lyric here, these expensive, these is red bottoms, these is bloody shoes. Now, I've already done the first step of the what. I've thought about what meaning is created by this lyric. And so I have decided that this lyric is trying to say that Cardi B is both financially powerful and physically powerful. That's the meaning that is created by this lyric. The next step that is going to require me to analyse is to explore how she creates that meaning. How does she convey that information to me in this lyric via her crafting? And that is going to require me to break down this quote into all the different techniques going on inside of it. So let's do this. First of all, we have an allusion. An allusion is a technique where you refer to something that exists in the real world. It can be an object, an event, a company, something like that. In this case, Cardi B is alluding to Christian Le Bouton shoes. I probably butchered that pronunciation, but you know the shoes I'm talking about. They're famous for having red soles. Now, the reason that she's alluding to those shoes is because of what they symbolize. Symbolism is when a concrete object, something that physically exists, like a shoe, is used to represent an abstract concept. Freedom, happiness, democracy, and so on. In this case, we've got the concrete object of a shoe being used to symbolise her financial power, because as she explicitly says herself earlier in the line, they're expensive. OK, these are shoes that you can only buy if you have a lot of money and therefore she's trying to allude specifically to how wealthy she is by saying that she can afford to buy these really designer shoes so she's got that financial power there we also get a sense of her physical power when she uses colour symbolism to change the meaning of those red bottoms so at first the red bottoms was the allusion to the designer shoe now she's changed it to bloody shoes. Now with that, we have to think about the connotations of the word bloody and how that connotes violence and aggression. The fact that it's now at the bottom of her shoe would suggest that the, the literal blood, the violence, is not being experienced by her, but committed by her. That's why it's at the bottom of her shoe. It's that whole uh, kind of classic image of she's got somebody under her shoe. So in that sense, she's absolutely showing her uh, physical power as well. Again, through um, that kind of symbolism behind bloody there. We can also see this parallelism. Parallelism means that the sentences form a very similar grammar. So these is red bottoms, these is bloody shoes. The grammar is identical. These is adjective noun. Now parallelism, because of the way that it um, words things identically, is often about showing a kind of equality between things. And therefore, we could say that from looking at these is red bottoms, these is bloody shoes, she's saying that she possesses the financial and the physical power in equal measure. They are just as much red bottoms as they are bloody shoes. 
all of this sense of her having this financial power um, and this physical power is further reinforced by the colloquial language in these is. She's very deliberately breaking the grammar rules there. She's not speaking in the way that is grammatically correct. She's speaking in the way that she would naturally speak. And that again shows that sense of power because she feels she has that ownership of her own language, that pride in her own language. And she's not going to change the way that she speaks because she's got a song and because she's got this fame. We've also got the fact that these are declarative sentences. So declarative sentences are sentences which state something. I've also just realized I forgot to define colloquial language. Colloquial language is informal language. So the declarative sentence plus the colloquial language combine together to create a very confident tone. She is very certain of herself. She's very confident and certain in her own power, both financially and physically. So overall then, what you can see from what I just did is that I thought about what meaning is being created. And then when it came to analyzing, I broke down how that meaning is created by picking apart all of Cardi B's choices in her language. That's why it would be called a language analysis. So I looked at all the different aspects of uh, techniques being used that were creating meaning here. This is why the key, one of the keys to being really good at analysis is also knowing a wide range of techniques that writers can use. Now, of course, when Cardi B was writing this song, she might not have known the names of all the techniques she was using. She might not have known parallelism and illusion and colloquial language and colour symbolism. But that doesn't mean she didn't know what she was doing. She would have known the meaning she was creating, even if she didn't know the fancy title that it had. And with you, it's a similar concept. If you don't know the name of the technique, that doesn't mean you can't analyze it. You can still analyze because you can see something being used for effect and you can talk about what effect that it has. However, in terms of the GCSE English language and literature, they far prefer you to actually know the names of the techniques that you're talking about. And therefore, knowing a wide range of different language and structural techniques is really important to reaching the very highest level of analysis. Essentially, the more tools of the trade that you know, the more you will be able to identify and explore in the text's work. Simple. It's time now for you to have a go. So we've got here a lyric from Kendrick Lamar's song, Humble. And I want you to have a look at first of all, asking yourself, what meaning is he creating in this line? And then see if you can do some language analysis to break down how he creates that meaning. Now, if you feel like you need a few hints, stay on this video for a little bit longer as I've got a few hints for you. The first hint that I'm going to give is the what. I'm going to tell you the inference that you could have from this lyric and then you can stop the video, take that inference and go and figure out how that meaning is created. The second hint I will give is to also identify the range of techniques that could be talked about in this quote. So first of all, if you do want the hint of the inference, stay because I'm about to show you. And here it is. So Kendrick Lamar has his own voice and identity, while others allow themselves to be controlled and limited by society. That is one of the things that he is saying in his song Humble and that is gotten across in this lyric. So your job now is to go and explore how that line from his song creates that meaning. Stop the video here if you don't want any more hints. You want some more hints? Okay, I'll give them to you. So the next round of hints, the techniques. First of all, an imperative sentence. An imperative sentence is commanding you to do something. So we have to ask ourselves, with him commanding us to do something, what kind of tone does that create? Tone refers to the feelings or emotions of the speaker. So how does it show that he's feeling? Um, how does it show that he views us as well? You've then got personification in my soul speak. So he's personifying his soul as speaking. What does that mean? Why has he made his soul speak? What are the connotations of a soul? And why is he saying that is what is speaking? He uses direct address with you, let the meds talk. So direct address is fairly obviously when you address your audience directly. 
but we've still got a question of who exactly is the you? Is he speaking to a specific person, a specific group, or is he just speaking to absolutely anybody who is listening to his song? Let. We need to think about the connotations of the word let. Why does he word it as you let the meds talk? Why that word? Personification in the meds talk. Again, we have to ask ourselves, why is it meds? Meds is short for medication. So what is it that the medication could represent? And why has he said talk? We can also look at how this personification contrasts to the my soul speak personification. We can also look at the contrast in the verbs. So how we let and we must watch versus he speaks. What's the difference between those? And why is there that difference? We can also look at the parallelism. So we've got very similar grammar going on here in terms of uh, it being uh, watch my soul speak, you let the meds talk. Of course, the slight distinction is that the watch my soul speak is phrased as a command, whereas you let the meds talk is phrased as just a typical, typical main clause um, of subject, verb, object. So we've got to ask ourselves, what is he trying to suggest with that parallelism? Remember with Cardi B, it was about suggesting things in like equal measure. So why has he got that parallelism there? So that's all of your hints for this lyric. Again, I cannot wait to see what you've come up with in the comments. And that brings us to the end of this video for this week. If you found this helpful, don't forget, hit like and subscribe. See you later.